Hey there everyone, this is Danielle taking a look at the new Game Boy options uh, that are available as part of the Switch's weird virtual console thing that's not virtual console. <laughs> um, I didn't see the Nintendo Direct for this, so I have no idea what game is going to be in this. I'm just going to dive in, have a little look, see what I think. Um, I did have uh, a Game Boy Pocket and then a Game Boy Advance as a kid, so there are certain games I would really like to see in here. Um, I don't know what the library's gonna be. Uh, I also don't know how the controls are gonna go. Uh, you may recall I complained about the NES not having button remapping, uh, so I couldn't play it super well with this style of controller with the diamond face buttons. Uh, but that may be less of a problem here, because if you look at the A and B buttons on both of these, they're arranged in the same way as the A and B buttons on one of these. So, it might be alright. <laughs> Uh, I imagine games that require start and select a lot would be hard to play with Joy-Cons. Uh, I had that problem with um, Super Metroid on the SNES, because you have to press select a lot to switch to missiles, and select is real hard to reach on a left Joy-Con. Uh, but on one of these it should be fine, they're just normal buttons. Uh, I guess we'll dive in and see how we go. So yeah, I've got no idea what games to expect here. I definitely have uh, more of an attachment to certain advanced games, even though my first, like, my first handheld was Game Boy Pocket, so like there are various games for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color that I that I adore here, but there are more advanced games that I'd really want to see. So knowing what to expect, let's dive in. <laughs> I believe I believe you don't need the um expansion pack to play these. I think they're just normal Nintendo Switch Online, which is good because I don't have the expansion pack. Uh, I don't intend to get it because I think that's us. Uh, let's see, settings? Oh, okay, so you can switch between original Game Boy screen, uh, Game Boy Pocket, and Game Boy Color. Interesting. So, yeah, I had a Pocket, which is, you can see it's a bit less green than the original Game Boy, so I'm, I don't have the sort of nostalgia a lot of people would for this sort of style. Um, I guess I'll say it's a Game Boy Color, uh, and see how things go. I'm not quite sure what this setting does. Maybe there's two different ROMs available for each game. Uh, I don't know what this checkbox does either. Reproduce classic feel. Oh, I think, oh, I think it adds ghosting. Right, because uh, uh, the screens on these things suffered, like, really cheap LCDs that you had back then. They suffered really badly from, like, screen ghosting as things moved around. Uh... The, like, there were, there were things that are worse at it than the Game Boy. The Game Boy compensated for it pretty well. Um, but, like, I, I don't think you'd want to play like that when you can play without that feature. Um, I guess I'll try turning off small screen. I assume that's, like, a uh, pixel-perfect scaling sort of thing. I'll try switching that off for now and see how that goes. I think what games are actually here. Uh, I've never... I didn't know there was an Alone in the Dark game for Game Boy Color, so that, that's a good start. Uh, Game & Watch Gallery is pretty good. Uh, I don't, didn't know about Gargoyle's Quest. Kirby's Dreamland is a classic. That's a good one to see there. Uh, we've got Link's Awakening... Uh, Link's Awakening in several different languages. Again, like, that's a classic game. That belongs here. Uh, Metroid 2... is not great. Um... There are multiple remakes of Metroid 2 that make it, like, less terrible, basically. Um, you may have heard about AM2R or something like that, which was a fan remake, and then Nintendo did um, Samus Returns for the 3DS, which is a vastly better version of the same game. Uh, Mario Land 2 Six Thousand Coins is the first Game Boy game I ever had, <laughs> so it's nice to see it here. Uh, I'll give that a go in a second. Uh, we've got Tetris, of course. Uh, oh, and that's it. This is a weirdly limited starting selection. Uh, we've got, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games. The one under my face here is Warrior Land 3, which I think is a really good choice. That game is fantastic. Uh, and the Mario Land 2 is here. Oddly, there's no Warrior Land 2, and there's no Mario Land 1. Uh, both of which. Like, like Mario, don't get me wrong, Six Golden Coins is a better game, but they should probably both be here. Uh, Tetris belongs here, that's correct. And Link's Awakening also belongs here. 
and Streamland belongs as well. I think Metroid 2 is a weird choice, and I've got no idea what this Alone in the Dark game is. <laughs> uh, let's just dive into Six Golden Coins and see how it plays. So yeah, um, as I said a little while ago, this was the first game that I had, basically. Um, for my for my Game Boy Game Boy Pocket. So I haven't played it in color really. Uh, we did have, I think, a Super Game Boy, but I don't think I ended up using it. Oh yeah, this is classic. <laughs> uh, so you can see it's not too different from like Mario 3 or World or something like that. You can spin jump in this game, I believe. I forget how. You might need to be big, actually. Yeah, you have the spin jump like you do in World. Um... Okay, and I've got save states. Oh yeah, you just press down in mid-air. So yeah, um, it's also got two, like, extra layers of power-up in this game. Uh, you can get a fire flower and you can get, like, a carrot that gives you bunny ears. It's fairly similar to World, because World had, um, the cape and the fire flower. And the bunny ears let you hover. But you can't actually fly with them like you can with the cape, but... Like, the layout of everything is, is fairly similar to World. Uh, this level, I believe, is the only one you can't replay. This game has a world map, the first Mario Land didn't. Uh, uh, but this particular level, I believe, you can't revisit once you play through it once. It's just sort of a tutorial, really. Uh, hearts are extra lives, which is kind of weird. Uh, I suppose because the game wasn't in color, they didn't want to use a special colored mushroom. That's a checkpoint. There's a fire flower. Uh, you can see Mario's color didn't change, because again, this game was built to be played on a, on a Game Boy with that color. So instead they just gave him this little hat. It uh, feels a bit like, like a modern Kirby game, almost. Uh, with the little hats. Yeah, you can spin jump to break these things, like you can in World. I'm not sure what's up with these blocks. Uh, you'll notice my coins are counting off the bottom there. You'll, something interesting in this game happens when you get to 100. Uh, it doesn't give you an extra life. You just keep collecting them. Uh, it's a bit... A bit unorthodox, as uh, classic 2D Mario's go, one might say. And that's the end of the level. If you ring the bell, you get like a bonus minigame afterwards, but you don't have to. Uh, you can see if you can get some lives or some extra power-ups. Or nothing if I mess it up. Yeah, the three there will give you two extra lives. The carrot is the, um... Other one. <laughs> I remember how games work. So yeah, you can see we've got a bit of a world map here. You can hold down B and just sort of look around if you want. Or you can just go into one of the worlds, like so. Yeah, this is pretty much the same game I remember. Just some more colours. I remember sucking at it. Uh, I'm probably better at it now, given like I've actually cleared things like World and 3. I definitely couldn't play any of those games with the kitchen. There you go, 100 coins, then we still aren't getting any extra lives, because this game is a bit weird. <laughs> this is quite playable on a pro controller. Uh, I don't really have any problems about with the buttons being un unremappable. Uh, there's no power-up storage or stacking in this game, so you get a fire flower when you already have one, that doesn't give you anything. This is a shame, but I suppose a lot of Mario's were like that. I want to go somewhere that has the bunny hood, so we can just see that for a minute. This game does save after every level. Uh, I don't- I think- I believe the original Mario Land didn't have saving at all, because it was so short. It was just like a one- uh, a one-shot sort of thing. 
Yeah, but this one saves all your progress for every level. Quite nice. It also has, um, next to my coins down there you can see it's 24. That's a, that's a number of enemies I've killed counter. I don't know if it does anything. <laughs> So yeah, if I now quit the game, that level will stay done. Uh, cause this game is nice like that. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, I do want to show off what the bunny hood does, so I'll see if I can find one. Uh, I also want to show how coins work, actually. Um, because yeah, you don't actually get lives for coins in this game. Instead, uh, this is the end area of the game. You can see there's like six slots here, you put the six golden coins in here, it unlocks the final area. It's, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> also, yes, this is the first game that introduces Wario, which is why it's a W on the castle. Uh, so this is what you do with your coins. You take them into this area, uh, and you have a bunch of like little mini-games you can play by spending coins. Which give you stuff like power-ups and lives. This is probably a good way to get a bunny hood so I can show what they do. Uh... I probably can't time it, so... Oh no, I got it. There we go. So yeah, you get these little, little ears. Uh... Uh, I'm gonna just go to another level so I can show them all. I think this was my favourite zone in the game. The kid. The giant Mario that you run around in. Okay, there we go. So yeah, you can see I'm mashing the button right now and I'm like, essentially losing no height. If I start going forward, yeah, I lose a little bit more, but yeah, the, the bunny ears are pretty helpful like that. You hold the button, you do drift down slowly, but you can maintain your height pretty good if you just match the button like this. And yeah, that's what the bunny ears do. Uh, and that's all the power-ups in the game, so there you have it. Uh, that's Mario Land 2. Looks like a completely playable version of the game. Um, I'm going to change a couple of these settings and see what happens. Uh, let's turn on display with small screen to get an idea of how small that is. Uh, and then let's dive into... Tetris. Okay, so small screen looks like that. You can see it's like a pixel-perfect scale-up. Uh, you probably want to play with a, a bit bigger normally, given how much, like, wasted space there is on the screen, but if you want one of your pixels to look bright, then you can have that. Wow, Tetris on the GBA on the Game Boy didn't have fast drop. That's weird. Oh wow, I'm not used to this version of the game at all. I'm expecting it to control exactly like Pooh Pooh Tetris, but th there's no reason to expect that. It doesn't ha doesn't have a hold button or anything. <laughs> uh... You also get the little shadow of where your piece is gonna land. Uh, because that's more of a modern nicety. Yeah, it's Tetris. Uh, I think, you know, if you want to play Tetris on a Switch, like, Pure Pure Tetris exists. And it's gonna, probably going to give you a better experience than this game. Uh, but, you know, if you if, if you specifically have nostalgia for this one. Oh yeah, there's also, uh, like save states and rewinding and stuff. It's pretty much just how you cheat in this game. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh... Oh, deep thing? Oh, maybe. I'm not sure if this is endless, or... I haven't really played the original Game Boy Tetris. I'm not quite sure when it actually lets me done, or if it's just until I die sort of thing. Oh, it says level 1 now. I, I guess it goes up every 10 lines or so? I love a hold button so I can hang on to those uh, eyepieces until later, but nope. 
Not a thing in this game. And yeah, there's no fast drop either. Pressing up does nothing. Oh, I think it's called hard drop, actually. Yeah, there's no hard drop. Yeah, that's Tetris. <laughs> uh, probably not the best Tetris experience you're going to have on the Switch, just because Puyo Puyo Tetris exists. But, you know, it's a classic. If you've got nostalgia for this one, then you can play this one. I don't. I didn't have Tetris as a kid on the, on the Game Boy, so it's not something that I'm particularly in love with. Uh, let's fiddle with the settings a little bit more and see what else we can do here. Classic field time. Uh, this is the Game Boy Color game, so it's going to be in color anyway. Oh, okay, the classic feel puts like a little pixel grid on the screen. Not bad, actually. I'm curious how that'll look if, um, I toggle the setting back. Or small screen. I thought it was ghosting, but it looks like it, it's, it's more like it shows the, um, dot matrix more clearly. It looks pretty nice. It's not bad. Okay, can I, can I start the game, please? Tutorial <laughs> yeah, on three. Playing Japanese, apparently. So, if you've seen Warrior Land 2, Warrior Land, or Warrior Land 3 before, like, you probably are familiar with the kind of game this is. It's a puzzle platformer. Wario doesn't have um, lives or health and cannot actually die in this game. With one exception. Uh, but like for the most part, it's it's completely like about figuring out the puzzle of trying to get through the levels and get places. Um, and less about like precise execution and stuff like that. And it's good. <laughs> um, Wario Land 2 is the one I had as a kid, again. Uh, that one worked on a regular Game Boy and on a Game Boy Color, but it made you erase your save if you swapped it from one to the other. It was really weird. I assume there were some technical reasons for that, but... Yeah, um... You can't skip any of this, by the way. Uh, all this opening cutscene here. Are you aware, Wario? This world's in the music box you're peering into. I was the god that protected this world. One day, a wicked being sealed away my power and took control of this world. Wario, I want you to find the five music boxes, break the hidden seal, and recover my powers. Find them, I'll send you back to your own world. Of course, all the treasure you find is yours to keep. Will you help me? Oh, treasure, huh? Wario does like treasure. <laughs> Okay, so, now saving, save complete, you can actually play the game. <laughs> the main difference between Royal Land 2 and Royal Land 3 uh, is that this game uses this world map, uh, and the levels are kind of non-linear. Um, every level has four separate treasures, and you'll get one at a time. Uh, like, you have to come back to each level to get each treasure. If I pause here, you can see, yeah, there's like a grey, red, green, and blue treasure chest. Uh, and we're only going to be able to get the grey one right now. Uh, it's, it's kind of Metroidvania-ish. <laughs> like, it, it's obviously not a real Metroidvania because it's split into levels like this, but... Like, you can see, it's a little bit similar. Uh, also, yeah, these guys don't hurt me. Uh, like, they knock me back a little bit, and you can see I've been electrocuted, but I'm fine. <laughs> And yeah, that, that's a theme for this game. Like, there are things that look like they'll hurt you, they don't hurt you that much. <laughs> so yeah, um, the way these game, this game flows, for each treasure you find, uh, you have to get the key first, I just got the grey one, uh, and then you have to find where the chest is and open it using that key. This level's pretty straightforward, given it is the tutorial, essentially. Uh, you can collect money in this game. You can see we have 11 coins now. 
it's not as important as it was in the previous game. Uh, in Warrior Land 2, finding all the money was, like, super important. Uh, because you needed to pay to get treasures, basically. Uh, there were too many games to play at for each level that gave each gave you a treasure, and for both of them you need to spend coins. Uh, this game also has those big hidden music box coins. Uh, you can see there's eight in this level. I think there's eight in every level. But yeah, you can see this game is a bit more polished, perhaps. Uh, given not polished, it's, it's prettier. It's got more colours to it, given it actually is a Game Boy Color game. Um, and yeah, that's us getting the first treasure. There you go. So yeah, this is a completely playable version of Wario Land 3. Uh, I already had this on 3DS Virtual Console, and that might be a better way to play it, depending on how you feel about the Switch and the 3DS and stuff like that. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with this way of playing it. This should work fine. <laughs> Unless it requires you to be online whenever you play it, which the 3DS one doesn't, so... Like, a lot of the appeal here is being able to play these games on the go, obviously. Uh, you can see I unlocked two levels uh, for completing the first one, so you can see the game sort of opens up a little bit as you go. Also, this game has a day-night system. You can see it's nighttime now. Uh, different enemies show up at night, uh, different areas can be accessible, that kind of thing. Eventually, you get, like, one of the upgrades from one of the, one of the levels will let you change day to night on this screen by pressing a button. Uh, but at the beginning, you can't do that. Uh, you just have to basically play a level and then come out and the time will change. Um, I believe an option shows up in this section once you have the ability to do that, but I don't have it yet. Oh, right, yeah, that's what that does. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, you can replay the last cutscene because that usually gives you a hint about what you're supposed to do next. You can also go here to see all the treasures. There's 100 in the game. Uh, so yeah, Warrior Land 3, it's fantastic puzzle platformer. Um, I'd highly recommend playing this one. Um, if, you know, you haven't. If you already have, you can play it again. <laughs> uh, then we got Dreamland. Um, not, like, this is, this is the first Kirby game, and I would say it's not the best one. Uh, there's no copy abilities in this one, and it's very short. Um, like, I think, I think it's decent, uh, but like if you if you want like a like a, a full blown sort of Kirby experience, you're not going to get it here. Um, you probably want Kirby Superstar, which is in the SNES section. That game is fantastic. Uh, Link's Awakening DX is fantastic too. Uh, I think this is my favorite version of this game. Like they did a Switch remake, but I think I still prefer this version just because some of the stuff on Switch remake was annoying. <laughs> uh, Game and Watch Gallery is always pretty good if you enjoy Game and Watch games. I don't that much. And I don't have any nostalgia for them because that was that was before my time really. Uh but like it's a good implementation of those games if you do enjoy them, which is they're not something I'm super into. Uh I don't know what Gargoyle's Quest is. I haven't played Alone in the Dark. <laughs> uh I I think I've got a, a decent idea. The library is hilariously small, but you can play Warrior Land 3, which I love, so that that's something. Uh let's look at the advanced ones now. <laughs> Uh, so the, the advance, the controls are almost the same as the classic Game Boy, except it had L and R buttons. Obviously this controller already has L and R buttons, so that shouldn't be a problem, but uh, let's dive in and have a little look. Okay. I'm, I'm... Oh. Or not. I guess we can not do that. <laughs> I'm going to go back into the Game Boy regular. Uh, it's not even telling me what games are available if I do that. <laughs> Wow. It let me install it and didn't tell me until I tried to run it. Uh, so that's pretty weird. Uh, I'm gonna play some Link's Awakening. So... Uh, yeah, I was gonna start a file. So the main problem with this game, uh, which is shared by the Oracle games, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, both of which are really good games, is basically that the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, which is what those ones were made for, doesn't have a lot of buttons. Uh, so there's no, um, 
interact button, like you would have in Link to the Past, for example, which had an A button, B button, Y button, and X button all doing separate things. This one, you have two buttons at the bottom of the screen that are B and A, and you equip something to both of them. Uh, and one of the things you equip is the power bracelet, like in Link to the Past. Or power gloves, but it's, it's a bracelet in this game. And it lets you pick up these pots, right? But even if you have it, walking into the pods will still show you this message uh, if you don't equip the bracelet and use it. Uh, and similarly, things like your shield... Uh, oh yeah, I gotta talk to this guy. Hello. Uh, things like the shield, the sword, uh, all that kind of stuff takes up slots. So, in some ways, the Switch version is better because you don't need to equip the shield or the bracelet or the sword. Uh, you have two item buttons which you can equip, like, the more advanced items to and basically keep them there. Uh, which is, like, understandable because the Switch has a lot more buttons in general. <laughs> uh, got my shield back. And yeah, you can see it just went from B button automatically, so... Uh, the shield works more or less the same way in the Switch remake, except that it's on, I think, the R button. Uh, we'll get our sword real quick. So yeah, um... This is perfectly playable, it's just... It has some quirks based on the fact that there aren't many buttons. And it's a shame that... Like, I understand that they didn't want to change the game too much, but... That particular issue with this game is something that... I maybe would have liked them to try to do something about. I don't know what. That's select to open the menu. Oh, wrong way. Here's my sword. Oh, right, the owl. Hello, owl. <laughs> so you were the lad. No, I'm not a lad. Yeah, the windfish. It's said that you cannot leave the island unless you wake the windfish. It's now going off in a serious forest. I will wait for you for that food. Yeah, the, the owl pretty much tells you where you're supposed to go. Found my sword. It must be yours because it has your name engraved on it. Okay, um... I'm gonna swap these around. Uh, hang on. Shield. There we go. <laughs> okay. And now I can basically play a Zelda game the normal way. It's more or less the normal way. But yeah, the, the fact that you have to equip things like the power bracelet and the shield and the boots and a, a lot of items need to be in one of your very limited equip slots to use in this game. Uh, which is understandable because it was on a Game Boy, and a Game Boy doesn't have a lot of buttons. Uh, and they are using all of them. Like, you press Start to do that, and you press Select to do that. And then there are no more buttons. <laughs> uh, but it's a shame that they didn't really try to address that. Um, until, more or less, Minish Cap? Uh, which used the R button as, like, the, the interact with stuff button, because it was on the Game Boy Advance. But they wasted the L button, uh, on this, like, on do doing one, one action that you can only do in certain places. Uh, instead of, you know, making it a general button and putting that in a menu or something. Uh... So yeah, um, it would probably be more playable to get the remake instead. Oh, hello. Okay, the X button does the same thing as the B button. And the Y button does nothing. Uh, so if you wanted, you can press X and A on the top here. Hang on. Instead of using B on the bottom there. I, I guess depending on the way you like to hold controller, that might be easier. I don't know why, why the Y button just does nothing. I, I probably would have made it a copy of A, given the, the layout they're going with. But no, it does nothing. Um, I'll just do nothing. Yeah, uh, back to game selection. Uh, so yeah, like, the, the Switch remake is probably going to be the, the better experience just because of the controls, but I do really like this version of the game. Um, 
I'm kind of baffled by how small this selection is. Uh, I understand that they're going to, like, trickle more games out, but there are more Dreamland games for a start. Uh, there's the Oracle Zelda games, Ages and Seasons, which are excellent. Excellent games. Uh, and they're also for the Game Boy Color, so it's not like it wouldn't fit in this collection here. Um, Warrior Land 2... Uh, God, what else? Pokemon. There's no Pokemon here. Uh, I don't know if there were, like, licensing issues, but, like, red, blue, yellow, gold, silver, all on the Game Boys and absolute classics, and available on Virtual Console. I I'm pretty sure I have, a I have, like, Crystal on my 3DS from the Virtual Console. <sighs> Uh, and yeah, it's got multiplayer, but like, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering what's in here because it won't even let me see it. Maybe if I go into here, it'll like tell me what I'm missing or something. I have a feeling the selection of advanced games is going to be pretty limited and disappointing, simply because the selection of original Game Boy games is pretty limited and disappointing. Uh, if I hover over here, will it show me? Uh, Game Boy? Game Boy Advance? What, what, what games? Uh... Are these games that it offers? I'm going to assume that these are the games that are available, even though I can't see them. And just assume that this is what they're offering. <laughs> Minish Cap is an excellent choice. Uh, that game is incredible. Absolutely fantastic. Actually, hang on. If I look at the Game Boy ones, I can probably get an idea of what they're listing. Uh, yeah, th these are the ones that I just saw. So, yeah, it, it looks like this is showing you the games that are actually available, even though I can't see them in the app properly. But yeah, Minish Cap, excellent choice. Phenomenal game. Fantastic. Superstar Saga, even better, if anything. Superstar Saga is a masterpiece. Fantastic game. Um, this one's a little bit of a strange choice. I do think that in some ways this, this is a better version of Super Mario Bros. 3. But also it's Super Mario Bros. 3, um, which is already in the NES and Super NES libraries in the form of All-Stars. It's a little strange to have a third copy of essentially the same game. Uh, if they'd made it the one, the one that's World, uh, that would make a little more sense to me, because that version of World, uh, like, that's only appeared once in any of the other libraries, and, and the GBA version has some extra enhancements and tracks your dragon coins and stuff like that. I think this game does something similar, but it makes less sense to me, given there's already, like, an enhanced remake of that game available. <laughs> uh, Warrior Way Inc., obviously a masterpiece. Fantastic game. Um, I would like to see them put WarioWare Twisted on here. Uh, because, yeah, this is control and shit. But they could do that. They, they could let you play WarioWare Twisted. Uh, I, they, they might. I don't know if they will. Uh, then we got Mario Kart Super Circuit. I had this as a kid. I didn't really get into it because I didn't know how to play Mario Kart. Uh, but Super Circuit is good. Uh, that's a decent choice. Uh... And I don't know this game. What is it? Ooh. <laughs> PG for mild violence and sexualized imagery in this, uh, like, avoid hitting the walls puzzle adventure thing. <laughs> okay. I mean, it looks like fun, but I can't play it because I don't have the expansion pack thing. Um, I'm just trying to think classic Game Boy games that are missing. Metroid. Metroid is not here. Uh, they chose Metroid 2 Return of Samus, which most people don't like. Uh, like, some people liked it enough to want to make a remake that's better, which is why A2MR works, AM2R exists, and why Samus Returns exists, for that matter. But it's not, it's, it's one of the less loved Metroid games. Meanwhile, in the GBA, you have Metroid Zero Mission and Metroid Fusion. 
both of which are masterpieces. And they're not here. Uh, so that's a weird decision. Um, thinking about what else might be missing here. Uh, there's like third party stuff. Um, Golden Sun is fantastic. Uh, for example, just pulling a game out of nowhere, but I don't know what licensing they need to go through to feature that kind of stuff. Fire Emblem. Um, I think the first couple of Fire Emblems that got to the West were on GBA. Please click through here and just have a little look at what else was. Uh, I understand why the Link to the Past remake isn't included here, although. The fact that it had online play and Link to the Past's remake had four swords in it, it seems like it's something they probably should have included. Um, Advance Wars, Metro Fusion, obviously, I already mentioned. Oh, Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow. And Circle of the Moon. Uh, Warrior Land 4, I didn't really like, but I know a lot of people did, so. Which will be in here. Yeah, this library is very limited. Uh, yeah, the Fire Emblem is another Castlevania. Oh, wow, there are a lot of games that they're just not including in this list because it's so limited. <laughs> uh, I'm more or less looking at Metacritic's list of best GBA games and noticing how many of them aren't in this list. <laughs> uh, the Sonic Advance games, pretty fantastic. Again, it's a third-party title. I don't know uh, how easy it would be to get that stuff across, but... Uh, again, Pokemon, Ruby and Sapphire, classic games, not in this list. Uh, I don't know if there's a reason that they can't be there, or if it's just they just didn't include them. Oh, Kirby. Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. A better Kirby than Dreamland for, G for Game Boy, not color. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, Fire Red and Leaf Green as well. Yeah, there's a lot of games that are not on this list. Uh, I don't think I can fault them on really any of these choices. Maybe Super Circuit. It is one of the weaker Mario Kart, and they're not doing, for example, Mario Kart DS, uh, which is fantastic because they're not doing DS stuff at all. Like they're still doing Game Boy Advance. Uh, but. Like, I think the choices they've made here are decent. Uh, like, these are good games. Uh, but it's so short. I, I, I can't imagine, like, doubling the cost of Switch Online so that I can, I can play these. Because there's so few of them. And I already can play them. I've, I've got them on Virtual Console. <sighs> and, of course, this has the fundamental problem that you can't use, like, ROM hacks and stuff. Uh, which doesn't affect these games as much, but it does, like, limit the value of a lot of these things. Uh, Paper Mario, my beloved. Dora's Mask. Crystal Shards. Okay, this is a list of games that's worth looking at. Pokemon Snap. Uh, why does it keep doing that? I'm trying to look at the list. Mario Party. Ocarina, Banjo Kazooie, Yoshi's Story, Art 64, Mario 64, Pilot Wings. I don't see Banjo Tooie, which is a weird omission, considering they do have the license for those characters because Banjo Kazooie's there, but I suppose licensing the game is a bit different. But yeah, um, this, this is like a bunch of classics and also some stuff I don't care about. <laughs> uh, Golden Eyes there, I got Star Fox. Uh, Mario Kart 64, again a classic. So yeah, this is a much better selection. I think this is after... This has been out for a while, though. Like, they're gradually adding games to it. Uh, and this one, yeah, this launched with an underwhelming list of titles. Like, what, six of them? Three, four, five, six. Yeah, and, and one of them is the same game that you can already play in this NES one without paying for the expansion pack. That's weird. <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah, like, 
I just don't, I just fundamentally don't like this style of of repeating games like this instead of letting you pick up the games you want to play like a virtual console used to. Uh it's frustrating. I don't know what this is about. Cake? Oh. That's weird. I d That's a weird thing to tell me. <laughs> I kind of get it, but it'll up. Uh, amazing Mirror? God, there are so many good GBA games they didn't put in that list. Mega Man Battle Network. Actually, the Crash Bandicoot uh, game for GBA is pretty good. Huge adventure, not not the one that was like a Spyro crossover. It was a really decent roller. <sighs> yeah. As Emerald. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they've omitted like a lot of really major titles from both the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance sections here uh, off the bat. Apart from, you know, they're, they're like drip, drip feeding this stuff because they're annoying like that. Um, I, I will absolutely give credit where credit is due. Warrior Land 3 is a fantastic choice of starting title. That game is incredible. So good. Such a good title. Just a really, really good game. Um, Alright then. Uh, ideally, I would have liked to actually show you some of the Game Boy Advance games as well. Especially stuff like Superstar Saga, because that game is phenomenal. Uh, but I guess I can't? I guess I'll just dive in and have a look at Return of Samus for a little bit. It doesn't have an intro cutscene. I guess it is a Game Boy game. Uh, I can jump, I can shoot at a duty, and select is to switching, like in um, Super Metroid. That's, uh, that's some loading screen. Can I am diagonally? I don't seem to be able to. Okay, this feels... Like, like it, the way the font at the bottom looks, I'm, it feels like I'm kind of playing um, these golden coins again. Oh, I start with them all four. Okay. Was not expecting that. Yeah, you gotta start with the all four. You need it before you can do anything. I think the original Metroid didn't have a map either, but Zero Mission does, and I'm used to Metroids having a map. <laughs> Decidedly less uh, classic music than the version from um, NES. <laughs> Colors also aren't great, but to be fair, this is a Game Boy game. I would definitely recommend playing this on the 3DS or playing AM2R instead, uh, based on my experience so far. I assume the gap on the left side of the screen there is so I'll have room for more energy tanks. Uh, is that like acid? I can't tell because the colour makes it look like water. Of course, this game doesn't really have colour.
Okay, there's a Metroid. something for doing that? Upgrades? Something went all rumbly. Yeah, not being able to aim diagonally is weird. Like, I know there aren't a lot of buttons to work with, but you can't even, like, press sideways and forward. Does it do damage? No, it doesn't. So it is water. Right, it's kind of growing on me. It's still not the Brinstar theme, though. Upgrade? Oh, it's a save point. I still haven't seen any upgrades, which is weird. Or even more full bombs. Or like, I don't know. Uh, not like bar beam, because you clearly already have that in this game, but something. Bizarre choice of game when my friends are mission this. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. That low health noise is super annoying, by the way. Health, the noise stops. We'll try to. Oh, four bombs. Oh, there we go. That's the noise I like to hear. Okay. Finally. Yeah, you can play this Metroid game if you want. Um... I don't really know why you'd want to, uh, given that Zero Mission exists. <laughs> oh, jeez. What's there? Hmm... <sighs> okay. Yeah, overall, these are really small selections, and... They kind of missed some stuff. <laughs> Obviously, I had stronger opinions about the Game Boy Advance games, which I can't even play. But I'm not. I'm not impressed. Um, I don't 
I haven't been um wowed enough to want to get the expansion pack. I mean, Paper Mario didn't wow me enough because I know that it doesn't run properly and has save bugs and stuff. So yeah, um, you can you can play you can play Warrior Land three uh if you want. <laughs> uh, outside of that, um. Like I, like I guess Link's Awakening is here, but with, with the control issues and compared to the Oracle games, it's, it's not that exciting. And I guess Kirby's Dreamland is here, but like, there's there's so many more, more complex and interesting Kirby games. And geez, I even have nostalgia for this one, and I'm just not that interested. Ah. <laughs> uh... Thorns under my face, though. That is the one that that I'm compelled by. Uh. You go up there, so. Oh, that's weird. They're different sizes? Fine. Oh, I see how it works. Okay. Because they're all together, they, they do that. Okay, I'm fine. But yeah, Warrior Land 3. And some other stuff, but mostly Warrior Land. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess online play is cool, but oof, I don't think most of these games do that. M maybe Alone in the Dark does? Uh, I know Tetris does, but... Most of the games here are single player experiences, so the fact that you can play multiplayer online is not adding to that at all because you can't play multiplayer with them. I don't I I don't get it. I especially don't get why there's no Pokemon here. Like that's gotta be the most iconic game on the Game Boy. And there's like was it six of it that they you could have picked at least one. But none of them are here. And none of them were on the Game Boy Advance either, even though there's three more you could have picked from. Just some, just some weird choices were made, and I don't really get it. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, thanks for watching. I enjoyed. I'll, I'll probably end up playing Warrior Land 3 on here, just because I really like Warrior Land 3. But outside of that, like, Unless they add something really, really groundbreaking. I don't, it's worth it. And like, I'm not buying these expansion packs, so I can't play these anyway. Even though there are some titles in there that I would have played. Were it, you know, something that's available to me, but... Yeah, you're not going to get me, Nintendo. You're not going to get me. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!